unfortunately, the situation in Hong Kong continues to deteriorate. Uh, this was such a special place for so long. And by the way, there were agreements in place that this was supposed to last for uh, much longer. And the Chinese Communist Party viciously violated that by attacking young people, by uh, beating protesters, and then ultimately by just breaking down the rule of law, right? The, the court system that for so long had been a place where uh, the financial community, the global financial community had come, business flourished, um, that no longer exists and continues to deteriorate. The, and you can see that. You can see it in uh, the willingness of businesses to come put uh, balance sheet risk on their companies is decreasing. Uh, the freedom for the people that live there is decreasing. And it breaks my heart because um, had the West done more, we might have extended the period of freedom and autonomy for the people of Hong Kong. And sadly, that's no longer the case. Well, you have two dictators working together. Uh, if you're a, a Ukrainian mother, this is tragic. Uh, because the Chinese Communist Party is providing material assistance to the Russian invasion in Europe. Uh, and so the, the risk of these two working together is great. Um, there are strategic responses that could be taken to this to diminish their capacity to do that. But if you think about uh, the, the money that underwrites the Russian war effort, the aggressive barbaric war effort in Ukraine, uh, much of that money is coming from China today. They're buying Russian energy. Uh, they're providing them with both military tools and commercial benefits uh, that allow Putin to continue his assault in Europe. Well, first of all, it's exciting when another democracy holds an election and it's free and fair and they compete really hard and there's a new leader. Uh, it's a glorious thing to send a message to the world of the freedom and independence of the people of Taiwan. And so uh, I'm thrilled that I'm going to get a chance to be at the inauguration to celebrate alongside them this new leadership team. And I'm confident we'll continue to do for the Taiwanese people exactly right. The new leadership will put Taiwan first, just as we put America first. <laughs> and that's wholly appropriate. I hope they'll, they'll work to grow their economy. I hope they will continue to take seriously the obligation that the Taiwanese people have to protect themselves from the Chinese Communist Party threat. And then I hope that American leadership will continue to recognize the important role of Taiwanese independence in the global strategic order. Uh, it benefits every American family, it benefits every family in Japan, in South Korea, to have the Taiwanese as a great partner in security in the Pacific. You know, we always pray and hope, but there's no reason to believe that Xi Jinping is going to release his death grip and ultimately destroy the economic and political well-being of the people that live in Hong Kong. You can see that's his intention. Uh, he can't tolerate any freedom. He can't tolerate um, the, the risk that somebody will say something that will uh, put uh, him in the position we know to be true, right? Which is totally disconnected from the Chinese people. Uh, Xi Jinping does, n no more represents the, the Chinese people and their will, and certainly not the people of Hong Kong. And so uh, I, I too think Hong Kong is uh, from an era gone by. Uh, breaks my heart that it is so. But you can see the rule of law and politics um, driving Xi Jinping to continue to increase the pressure and restrict freedoms in Hong Kong. And, that, and what will follow from that is that if there's no rule of law, then Hong Kong is no different than the rest of mainland China in terms of taking economic risk, and you'll see economic activity reflect that. From a business perspective, I understand that they've got to, if they're going to participate in those economies, they've got to comply with the law that's in those places. But the United States government has a role here too. And our response should not be to permit the Chinese Communist Party to dictate what uh, these uh, institutions that are providers of information to people all across the globe, but shouldn't permit them to restrict it. And when the Chinese Communist Party behaves that way, the United States government should take responses, whether that comes in the form of sanctions, whether that comes in the fo form of 
uh, laws. You know, we've done this with the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. We often tell American businesses the ways that they can behave around the world. And when the United States government does that, I'm confident that these businesses, whether it's a big American company or a small one, will comply with the U.S. rule of law as well. We have a lot of capacity to shape how these companies operate inside of China, including inside of Hong Kong.